and welcome to a brand new episode of Inside the PGTI. This week we are coming to you from Noida, which staged the Players' Championship in September 2017. Noida, or the New Okla Industrial Development Authority, is one of the main commercial hubs of the national capital region around Delhi. Having recently celebrated the 40th anniversary of its establishment, Noida now boasts the highest per capita income in all of the NCR. The 7 lakh inhabitants of the satellite town enjoy what has officially been declared the best housing in all of India. And more significantly, they live a healthier life than people in adjoining Delhi. Since 50% of Noida is under green cover, the highest such of any city in the country. Indeed, the colour green and the greens of Noida's iconic golf course were in the spotlight in the thick of the monsoon season. September 2017 brought with it the much-awaited Players' Championship on the Professional Golf Tour of India. It would be played at a much revamped and redone course, which now impresses the biggest names in the business. I'm playing in Noida after I think five years because my last event was 2011. So to compare the course condition, everything like I think I'm really impressed because after seeing this much greeny and the greens, they improve a lot and bunkers, you know the fairways. So I think it's a it's a and. The, I don't think it's an easy course because of the because of the I think last few few weeks is heavy rain and uh, rough was growing. The management there put in a human-like effort to make it a championship course at which events can be held all year long. The huge investments made in its maintenance have now made the course comparable to the best anywhere in India. But that's not the only reason why India's finest enjoy turning up there. Here's one of the local hands explaining it the best. I think Noida is one of the courses where scoring is really tough and uh, the key here is are the greens basically and around the greens. If you miss the green like even by a yard, the rough around the greens is pretty tough to control the ball. And the greens generally play hard though like luckily this time it, we are playing post monsoons so the greens are not as hard as they generally play but the key here is basically hitting the fairways right now because the rough is really up. The unique challenges on both the front nine and back nine there became even more accentuated thanks to the fickle weather in North India's monsoon season. So even the most experienced hands had to work on specific strategies for particular holes. Some of them are playing crosswind, so holes like uh, 17 and 18. 17 is playing, playing a bit of head right to left and the 18th is also playing a little uh, left to right. So these two holes uh, amongst the finishing holes are going to be I think you, you, you've got to put in a little more effort to make sure that you go through well with, with those ones. But uh, on the whole, I think the course is playing well. They've uh, put in a lot of work in the last few days, I believe. And um, the, the rough was quite, quite a bit, uh, I mean, apparently four or five inches. They did chop it down to about three odd inches now, which is still tough. Uh, I think it's true test of golf now. 11th is at a par four. You have to hit the right uh, yardage of the tee. Uh, green is a little small and you're hitting a long iron into that, that's one of the holes which is uh, tough and then you have obviously the 16 par 3 and apart from that, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, the golf course is a little, it's a, it's a tough layout. One day I'll be lying if I say it's easy. Everyone competing in the 30 lakh rupee players championship knew that only too well. The strong field for the tournament was spearheaded by that man, the defending champion, Hani Basoya. I'm feeling very confident playing on this golf course. I played three, four leader groups here and I, most of the times I played well here. So I'm feeling very confident this week. While Honey went in as the expert's choice as the favourite for the title, he knew his task would be cut out in the presence of a couple of others based in Noida who were banking on their local knowledge to gun for the Holy Grail. I feel really comfortable here, you know, I've won a tournament here before and uh, I've had some very good finishes here and uh, I play here often. So I feel very comfortable here and uh, yes, I'm sure the home course advantage helps. People say that, uh, you know, it's your home course, you should play well, but uh, at the same time, you know, when uh, there are not many expectations from you and home course, uh, it becomes a bit tougher. But yes, obviously, you know the lines much better on the greens because you play here day in, day out. So a clash of titans was in the offing as the 11th tournament of the year on the PGTI calendar got underway with a keen contest on the cards, no pun intended. Laying down the gauntlet early on was Patna's Aman Raj. He shot a 7 under 65. A round studded with 9 birdies that were offset by a couple of bogeys. 
The 22 year old was playing in just his second season as a professional and his career graph was on the upswing again after a minor dip. Aman had won the 2016 Emerging Player of the Year award before suffering a bad knee injury that consigned him to bed rest for one full month earlier in 2017. His journey since then had been quite enjoyable. First half of the season was pretty decent. It was, it was rolling on well. I had a runner up finish in Dhaka, PTI Open, and uh, second half of the season is going okay. Finished seventh in the last event, but Ahmedabad wasn't really a good trip for me. But now it's coming back, so I'm just looking forward for the next events and this event for sure. To finish well. The title holder wasn't too far behind Aman. Hani Besoya continued from where he had left off in Jaipur a week earlier, where he had finished as the runner-up. Looking for his second title of 2017, the Delhi lad made some brilliant bunker recoveries and saves from around the rough, firing seven birdies that went with just the lone bogey. Main moments here, I had six, uh, seven birdies, mare, which was a good really round for me. And I was hitting it well, so I was not, I was not in the pressure. I was feeling very relaxed on the course, and. And my, I, I made few putts, I made few long putts. One was 35 foot. To shoot low numbers, you have to hit straight. There are, the fairways are not that long. The fairways are very narrow, so you have to hit straight. Another youngster impressing the local faithful with his brand of golf was Gurugram-based Shivendra Singh Sisodia. He was two under at the turn, but lifted his game to a different level altogether thereafter, nailing four birdies to end the day with a solid 66. While the others struggled with the weather and course conditions, Sisodia's calm mind and sense of humour would help him seize the day. If you see my today round, I don't think so. I feel any challenges. If you keep the ball in play, there's no challenge. Yeah, greens are playing very good and fairway condition is also very nice. So the, the, the tea, uh, key point of this golf course is the tee shot. If you're keeping your ball in the middle of the fairway, there's no difficulties to play the course. That's how things stood at the end of the opening exchanges. Local favourite Amardeep was the highest placed among the Noida golfers in the fray. His card of 4 under 68 helped him come out tied fourth alongside the legendary Mukesh Kumar, Bengaluru's Udayan Mane and Delhiite Himmat Singh Rai. On that note, it's time for us to take our first break here on the show. Worth sticking around though. In just a couple of minutes, we'll tell you the scarcely believable story of one of the most versatile and colourful characters on the PGTI who's now turning heads with his latest venture. Welcome back. Round 2 of the PGTI Players Championship at the Noida Golf Course brought with it the promise of some mesmerizing action. The atmosphere was so thick you could cut it with a knife. And that was understandable. After all, this would be the most crucial round where the contenders would advance further while the pretenders would fall by the wayside. Overnight leader Aman Raj continued his strong charge, recovering from a slow start that saw him dropping a couple of strokes on the first five holes. Three successive birdies from the 7th to the 9th made it a satisfactory outing for the man from Bihar. I would say so because the way I was going in, uh, I am actually happy with my recovery today. I, I won't say anything else because it was, it was just 150% right and the putts were not falling in. So that was a little bit of heartbreaking thing. But it's okay, I'm, I'm really happy to get a recovery. Aman's maturity was impressing one and all. Having only turned professional in 2016, his meteoric rise had owed much to his temperament and adaptability. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm not, not getting very emotional on how I play. So I'm just ready to take whatever comes in and give my best. Obviously, I have some expectation to get better. I'm just learning how to take it in the pro-life. Even Aman's best efforts on the day, though, would not prove enough for him to upstage the defending champion. Hari Besoya had to likewise shake off a sluggish start. But once he got going, there was no stopping the 21-year-old. I played well today, I recovered well today. I started with two bogeys in four holes. 
So I made six birdies today. It was a good round. Yeah, I would have definitely take it because this is not a easy course. You have to hit it straight and you have to sink putts to hit birdies. And yeah, it's still windy. It was windy today, so it was a little tough. The three-time PGTI champion had already got 13 birdies to boast on his overall tally, and that helped him zoom to the top of the leaderboard with a score of nine under 135. As many had predicted, he would on a course that suits his strengths to the fullest. The best part of my game has been my hitting, my driver. I am hitting it well, I am hitting it straight and I have been using it often, very often on the golf course. I am going very aggressive. Bengaluru pro Udayan Mane though was slowly emerging as a strong challenger to Hani and Aman. He would close the second round in third place at 7 under 137. Having already won a tournament a month earlier in Kalhar, Mane quickly became the dark horse for the title. Shivendra Singh Sisodia was the other player still very much in the title hunt after round two. The cut would be applied at 3 over 147 with 57 professionals making it through to the money rounds. Among the local players remaining in the fray were Dipankar Kaushal, Rahul Bajaj, Arjun Singh Chaudhary, Raju Singh and Vikram Rana. Among those making the cut was arguably the most versatile and colourful character on the Indian tour. Golfer, weightlifter, magician, musician and now cyclist. The number of hats Siddharth Simwal wears is almost as many as the events on the PGTI calendar. My personality drives me to do a lot of different things. Uh, I, I really can't focus on one thing and just be 100% there. Although that would be great, but uh, I enjoy doing different things and I try and uh, pursue whatever I feel like. And uh, sometimes, uh, well, things work out, sometimes uh, they don't. Uh. His latest occupation, that of professional cyclist, came about more due to compulsion than choice. After a back injury had ruled 26-year-old Simwal out of competitive golf for a year, his physiotherapist gave him a straight choice between swimming and cycling in order for him to maintain his physical fitness with a low-impact sport. Fortunately for the Deliite though, he takes to new things like a duck to water while compartmentalizing effortlessly. I find 24 hours just fine. Uh, I get most of the things I need to do in that 24 hours done. Um, but it's about prioritizing what needs to be done at that point in time. Like, we usually have a decent off-season, uh, not that that's a great thing, but uh, that gives me enough time to pursue other things. And when I'm here on the golf course, I'm usually 90% to 100% here, mentally and physically. Golf, though, remains the one enduring love for the man from Delhi's Army Golf Club. Since his teenage years, it's been his source of sustenance and indeed, he feels, the main purpose of his very existence. I basically took it seriously, I guess, when I was getting out of school, maybe when I was 18. So I played one year of serious junior golf and then I played amateur golf and I got injured then also with my wrist. Uh, but uh, as time went by, I got good enough, I got into the team, I played for India and all, did all those things. 2013 is when I decided I'll turn professional. Did that uh, and I've been playing here since. Bristling at suggestions of his being merely a jack of all trades, Simwal feels the different things he does only complement one another. He feels it's only a matter of time before he can prove to people with a tournament win that there's so much more to life than just being a one trick pony, no matter how much of a toll it takes on him through multitasking. I do believe uh, it's chaotic. Uh... But some people say there's order in chaos. I don't know where that order is going to come from. But uh, yeah, I don't see any connection really between all the things that I do. And I don't try and find one either. I just enjoy doing them separately in their own time. And uh, each one of them gives me a sense of satisfaction and joy. So that's why I do them. There are many other things that I tried and I wasn't either good at them or didn't enjoy them as much. So, I mean, you only get one life. So might as well live it to the fullest. Unfortunately for Semwal, a card of even par in the penultimate round dashed his hopes of challenging for the crown. And in fact, things would only get worse for him a day later as he bowed out with a round of two over that dashed his hopes of a top 10 finish as well. He would eventually finish tied 25th at the end of the tournament. 
In complete contrast, tournament favourite Hani Besoya continued his sweet journey. He would pull clear by a massive seven-shot margin, making his title defence almost a foregone conclusion. A blazing start to his third round saw him making three birdies on the first six holes. His round of 6 under 66 gave him a remarkable tally of 15 under overall. I've been playing well. This is uh, I already had three top fives in the last three weeks. So I'm playing really well and I'm confident about this week. My plan is to get to 20 under. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm driving it well and I think two, three parts today, two, two, three long parts. So it was a, it was a good boost. While the others were mostly adopting a safer approach, given the rapidly and constantly changing weather and course conditions, Honey kept doing what he has right from his childhood days. And that is to play aggressively and fearlessly, backing his skills and his instincts. Since the junior level, I've started playing really aggressive and that's where, that's where I'm continuing. Among the couple of closest challengers to Honey was Simuni Appa, who overcame a horrid run of bad luck that initially left him frustrated with a bunch of lip outs. I build myself confidence, don't worry. Yes, putting is not going, letting not going, that's okay. But a lot of holes coming in, so I will hit well, I will hold the parts. Muniappa would give the crowd a masterclass on how to use the wedges. His short game in particular propelled him from overnight tied ninth to tied second. He knew he'd have to play aggressively on the morrow though to challenge Hani and move towards an unlikely upset win. Yeah, that's my plan but uh, Hani is uh, really playing good golf. So let's see, uh, hope for the best because uh, I'm also trying it. So putting is coming back then chances are there. Finishing the day alongside Muniappa was home course hero Vikrant Chopra. He emerged as a title contender for the second week running after a timely round of 69 that moved him up three places from overnight fifth. The 37-year-old's brilliant approach shots, iron usage and chipping prowess standing him in good stead. And while he knew upstaging Honey would be a tall order, Vikrant at least had his tactics clearly and firmly chalked out before the decisive round. The par fives are the key uh, to scoring well here, so probably you have to drive well on the par fives and uh, probably pick up an eagle or uh, something of that tone, you know. So that will give you a two shot cushion um, going uh, towards the leader and uh, probably play the par fives well and uh, hopefully uh, it will materialize. At the end of the penultimate day and round, Another Basoya, Delhi-based Sachin, had an impressive finish to showcase, courtesy of a second successive round of 70. To the delight of the Noida golfing fraternity, hometown hero Gaurav Pratap Singh was right up there as well, in tight fifth. Time then for one final break here on the show. When we return, we'll profile the tournament's brightest young shining star, whose secret to success had stunned and left in his wake some of the legends competing alongside him. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. One of the young stars making an impact with a bang at the 2017 PGTI Players Championship at the Noida Golf Course was 18-year-old Karandeep Kochar. After three rounds, the Chandigarh lad was placed an extremely creditable tight 14th, just two shots behind legends like Mukesh Kumar and Shamim Khan. As someone who came up through the ranks without playing much amateur golf, he struggled initially while transitioning with the different course setups, lengths and pins. But now he says he's finally found his feet. It's not been very easy, I must say indeed, but, uh, but I think I'm liking it a lot. Uh, I've gotten used to it now. Earlier I think I was a bit, uh, a bit nervous also playing with all the pros, you know, but I think I've gotten used to it now. And, uh, but I think it's fun. Life has changed a lot. I've gotten more serious, I think. Uh, work ethic has become better, so hopefully we can continue that. What made the transition easier was the presence of some familiar faces. Having grown up and come up through the junior circuit playing with some of the guys who are now fellow pros, at least made him comfortable travelling all over the country as he was kept good company. You see, like most of the players, you know, we've played, we've played golf together our whole life, you know, me, Arjun, Viraj, Jabir also. we played together our whole life and 
you know, just last night we had dinner together, me, Viraj, and Arjun, and we were just talking about this, you know, such a long journey it's been from juniors since we were 10 years old. Now we're playing on the pro tour together, so I think it's been really fun, and it's it's very good, you know, to have some good friends out here. While that's also helped in discussing and improving his game, what's helped Karandeep take his golf to the next level has been rubbing shoulders with the biggest Indian names in the business in a competitive environment. You know, you play with some such mature and great players, you know, you learn a lot from them and that I think that helps you to become a better person and also a mature person. So I think that has helped me because I've, I've gotten the opportunity to play some, some one of the best players here. Also helping his development has been the presence of big names like Sujan Singh, Ajitesh Sandhu and Jeev Milka Singh at his home base of Chandigarh. He regularly takes tips from them and they're always happy to oblige with master classes and lessons. Especially since Karandeep is clear about what's good about his game and what needs improving. I think my, my iron game and my driving has been very good this year. And I think if I can work on more is my chipping a little bit, although I've been chipping it well. But I think there's a lot, lack of confidence there, so sometimes I just don't trust it and that leads to bad shots. So I think uh, much more confidence in chipping, that would uh, help me get some lower scores. So I think that's the main thing I need to work on right now. Karandeep has been lucky in that his family has always been extremely supportive and patient and has not put any additional pressure on him to deliver results anytime soon. If anything, the young Tyro feels he didn't do well in his initial few pro tournaments because he himself set the bar too high and expected too much of himself, something he's changed recently. I think I just I haven't set any goal this year and I just wanted to get used to playing on the tour. So I just really want to play well, you know, work hard. That's, that's most important for me, working hard. And the result, I'm, I'm not very fond of if it's a good result or a bad result. You know, I just want to play some good golf. Unfortunately for Karandeep, he chose the worst possible time to bring out his worst round of the tournament. Struggling with the frequently changing weather conditions, he finished with a round of 7 under 79, bowing out with a tournament tally of 4 over 292 overall in tied 23rd place. Like Karandeep, another man who finished on an absolute low was local favourite Vikran Chopra. He carded in a 3 over 75, easily his highest card of the event, to finish on 5 under 283 for the tourney. Vikrant's effort helped him finish in fourth position overall, at least a couple of notches below what most would have expected. Finishing a position above Vikrant in sole third would be Bengaluru's Udayan Mane. He would have a satisfactory overall tally of 6 under 282. This was an extremely important podium finish for Mane since it helped him rise up rapidly in the overall order of merit stakes. His fellow Bengalurian, C. Muniappa, was among the only two players who seemed completely undaunted by the conditions needing to overturn a massive seven-shot deficit in order to upstage the overnight leader and title favourite Hani Besoya, Muniappa kept things simple in soaking wet Noida. I played the same condition a lot of tournaments, so that's why the main focus you ought to put in the fairways and greens, so that makes a play better. What wasn't making Muniappa's task any easier was Hani's supreme composure and calmness of mind. The 21-year-old from Delhi was in what is popularly referred to as the zone. With the previous experience of having won from tough situations before guiding him forward, Hani continued his relentless charge ahead, focusing only on his own game while being oblivious to the other's fortunes. That helped me on the final day. I don't look at other players. I just take my target uh, and I just look forward to that target and I don't, I don't see other players. I would not say it was easy, but I was not feeling pressure uh, at all. I was very relaxed and three birdie on the first three holes gave me a little more confidence. With the title slowly but surely slipping away from his grasp, Muniappa now changed focus and moved towards ensuring at least a second placed finish. He knew getting to double figures below par would do the trick, as long as he did the basics right. My mindset, uh, put on the fairways and greens and putt well, you will get under that number. So I'm focusing that only today. So. His triumph now a foregone conclusion, Hani waltz towards an easy and emphatic victory. He added three birdies between the 8th and the 18th, capturing a fourth professional crown. The celebrations were apt and fitting for a man who had managed top six finishes in each of his last four events. Apart from Vikrant, Amardeep Singh Malik and Gaurav Pratap Singh were the other two local golfers who finished in the top 10 in Noida. They were tied 8th at 3 under 285. 
a tally that paled in comparison to Hani's staggering 19 under 269, which gave him a scarcely believable nine-shot win in such an elite event. Muniappa knew there was no shame coming out second best to a man in such red-hot form. His own good form had thrown up good potents, by the way, for the future. The uh, iron shots are coming good and drives are coming good. So, putting also getting better now. So, let's see. Crowning glory was Hani's as he made sure the wet weather would not let his performance be a damp squib. Even as the tributes poured in, he himself acknowledged the magnitude and significance of this amazing win. This is one of my best wins. Uh, I played good all, all four days. So yeah, this is one of my best wins. Key to this performance has been my driver. I've been hitting really well and today I putted really well. That's how I played. That's how I played four under in this very tough conditions. Today was the toughest condition I've seen this year. So yeah, it was a good round. The prize money on offer was an added incentive to the impressive young golfer who went home four and a half lakh rupees richer. Muniappa would leave three lakhs the better, while Uday and Mane had to be content with around a lakh and eighty thousand. Hani's great showing there also vaulted him up from sixth position to fourth in the season's overall money list. Mane's effort, meanwhile, was critical in lifting him up from third to second in the order of merit, a list still dominated by the PGTI's all time highest money grosser, Shamim Khan. And that's all we could pack into this edition of the show. This is where we leave you with those memorable images of Hani Besoya celebrating one of the most comprehensive tournament wins of the year. Until next time, it's goodbye.